And I, I would love to, to pass it over to Bruce Taylor from the Viral Stewards. Thank you. Um, and so uh, my role in the, today's meeting is to uh, invite you to um, the Climate Collective and to sign on for net zero. Uh, but I want to show you why to do that, why it would actually be profitable to do that, depending on the path you do. Uh, we also participated in the Forest B project that was just mentioned. Uh, so uh, it's been a great event so far. So our main purpose is kind of getting there soon with increased profitability. Enviro Stewards, a living wage, uh, you know, net zero committer. Our first project was actually designing a system for the space shuttle. It recycled 100% of the water for the booster rockets. And... Um, but most of our solutions are much easier than that. Here's our team. We're about 18 people just north of Waterloo, Ontario. Our mission is to cultivate resilient business and improve lives. Um, if you want to learn a bit more about that, we have a TED talk. Just go to TED or YouTube and put in Better Than Charity. But uh, we've received some various B Corp awards. We're the, Can the only Canadian company to get a Global Sustainable Development Goal Award. And we got it in the category of partnering for the goals. And so Love to talk on any of those topics if anybody wants to reach out at any time. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen this one go by yet or not, but um, I'll, I'll give you a minute. So to me, it's not very often that I actually laugh at an environmental post and then think afterwards. Um, and so if you can't read in the fine print here, uh, this fellow is gonna continue drinking till 2049 and then stop when he's 101. And so that's kind of the opposite of what we want to do collectively as a climate collective. Uh, we want to get there sooner and we want to have bigger impacts sooner than that. And so I'm going to outline kind of the path of how do you get there. Um, so basically just baseline, identify, then implement. So I'll show you a bit about that. So baseline is where are you now? So it would take you decades to figure out your full footprint for every ingredient. So we just pick some representative ones. So this is a pharmaceutical company. And you can see in their footprint, you know, scope one and two is kind of the facility itself, but almost all of their footprints actually the ingredients they're buying. So if you want to make some, you know, your table stakes is to get to zero on your facilities for the electricity and gas you're buying, but you're going to need to address this big nut at some point. And so start doing some strategic ones there. So in their particular case, 75% of that footprint is just one ingredient they're buying. So we're going to go deeper on that ingredient on what can we do differently? And we've got some pretty interesting things we could do on that. Um, uh, and then how do you find and implement stuff to reduce it? So we have a process where we use to build the buy-in as we go. So who, what, why, where, when, how. I could go in more details later if you wanted to. Uh, but basically you want to find practical things and get them implemented. And then the last mile. So um, you just saw the forest B um, is one way in the examples I'm going to show you one used renewables, another one used uh, North American offsets. And uh, we prefer to use kind of international offsets um, like the safe water project. So basically you can plant a tree and we do uh, through forest B and other things, but how about not cut down the tree in the first place, right? So people are cutting down trees to boil the water to make it safe. And you can A, not cut down the trees, you can have safe water, you can avoid half the patients in the hospital, you can build the local economy uh, with your investment. We created climate change in the developed world and we're designing our solutions to benefit the developed world, but how about the developing world? And so anyway, that's when you're getting to the last mile, what to think about. So just three case studies quickly. So Maple Leaf Foods is the first large food company in the world to be carbon neutral. They just got an award from Clean 50 in the fall. And um, we only started with them in 2015. So by November 2019th, they were climate zero, like net zero for scope one, two, and three. Basically, we went into 35 factories. We found and implemented measures that saved more than enough to save enough money to offset the rest of the footprint of those 35 factories, plus their entire supply chain, all the animal feed, tractor fuel, fertilizer, um, packaging uh, from those savings. And so they have millions of dollars per year left over after their net zero. Plus they have the top line benefit of uh, getting there soon, right? But they're a big company. Well, how about somebody smaller? So maybe, uh, Southbrook Winery and Niagara on the Lake, they're already pretty good. They're already lead gold, organic, biodynamic. Somebody else just did not have said, hey, your next 5% is 20 year payback. So they said, okay, well, we're going to do solar panels then because that's seven year. They had us come in. We actually found and implemented a measure that saved 40% with a four month payback. They canceled one third of the solar panels they ordered because they didn't need them anymore to get to zero. 
that saved two rows of vineyard from getting covered with solar panels, saved $20,000 of wine, which brought the payback to two months. And basically the concept there is don't waste your energy more efficiently with renewables. There's a place for it, but don't start there, right? How about a small one? So we're a tenant, right? In a hundred year old building. Uh, we've cut our own footprint 78% per employee, and then we offset twice the remainder. And we bought our own meters. Hey, we don't pay for water, the landlord does. We bought our own water meter, cut the pipe, put it in. We bought our own amp logger, put it on our rooftop unit so we know how much we're using. Um, this spring, we built that uh, blue roof. So you see that uh, thing on the bottom right? Um, what that is, is we're actually storing the first two inches of every rainfall on our roof. So as you can see, uh, climate change is coming to bear now. And uh, on our own roof, we're doing two inches. On a roof in Mississauga, we're gonna store the first six inches of every rainfall on Credit Valley Conservation's uh, thing. If it's not going down the storm drain, then it can't flood. Plus, you got water evaporating from the roof, you got free air conditioning. We're analyzing it, but I don't even think our air conditioners come on since we stored the water on the roof. So, you know, just demonstrate some innovative things, but our main impact isn't ourselves. You know, we're down to four tons per year. Our work actually avoids 120,000 tons per year at our customers' facilities. So that's a metric we use, which is 30,000. And so what I want to encourage you to do is join the Climate Collective, right? It's easy to do. Uh, here's like kind of how it shows up for us. You know, you'll get on there uh, as a B Corp. You sign up to net zero. And the way to do it, figure out where you're starting. When you go to the mall, you are here. If you want to know where to, how to get to where you're going, you have to know where you are and where you're going. Then you're going to do a detailed dive on how can you significantly impact that, and then how do you offset the rest. So thank you.